Hello everyone and uh, welcome to the webinar here. Uh, I guess we'll give people a few seconds to catch up and we'll get started right away, you know. All right. Welcome again, folks. Uh, okay, let's get started. Uh, we're going to discuss uh, a method to add NLP to OLTP apps today. You know, uh, so before I kind of take a dive into the subject, I want to kind of frame the big picture for you guys. Let us imagine that we have uh, some kind of case study. Uh, it could be for, a, say, a mortgage application, or it could be for a healthcare application. Uh, say somebody says that, hey, I'm looking for a house. Uh, it needs to have a three-car garage and, um, uh, you know, uh, a, a yard, uh, maybe in a nice neighborhood, right? Um, so if a typical NLP process would probably spit out the nouns in there. And, of course, it can identify that there's a house, there's a car, there's a garage, you know. But it would not know instinctively that, you know, that, hey, the house contains the other, you know, aspects, the cars and the garage, you know. Uh, but today we already have applications in production, which probably, which definitely do capture, you know, house information uh, in terms of mortgage payments, uh, car information in terms of car payments, and so on and so forth. And we were to extend this, uh, a, a similar analogy to healthcare, uh, we could end up with a situation where somebody is saying that, hey, you know, we're looking for a hospital which can uh, treat a specific condition, you know, uh, or a hospital which uh, accepts a certain kind of insurance. Now, if we were to process through an NLP uh, interface, typically we would get something like, hey, there's a hospital that is a insurance or there's a particular healthcare condition. And these things would be identified as nouns, but uh, there would be no kind of uh, uh, interlinkage between those, you know. Whereas there, in a hospital uh, transaction system would know, you know, that, hey, you know, there is a patient and it would know what the condition is and the condition could be some kind of a, a verb or, a, you know, um, and so on and so forth, right? Um, so the idea is there are these disparities between what the transaction processing system understands versus, and it is already processing transactions for today, versus what is happening in the world of NLP, you know? So what we want to do here is, what I want to do here is to kind of find out first, uh, is this is an enterprise roadmap. Uh, it is not the enterprise roadmap since there are many technologies evolving, you know, uh, we're going to be talking about, you know, th there'll be other, uh, uh, approaches evolving over a period of time, you know, uh, but this is one way to, you know, slice this issue, you know. So if we were going to take a look at a typical application workflow, right? Um, so there is, oh, there uh, is that, you know, if we go to a typical application workflow, you know that, hey, you know, it, it's going to, it goes from an automatic speech recognition through some kind of NLP interface, uh, which interfaces with the transaction processing system, which it then in turn responds to some kind of natural language generation to a text-to-speech interface, you know. This is a typical workflow which kind of happens today, you know. Since there are a bunch of technologies involved here, I just kind of want to briefly discuss the different technologies involved before I dive into the method uh, I talk about how we go from NLP to LTP, you know. Um, all right. So if we were to talk about automatic speech recognition, right? 
So if we were to talk about automatic speech recognition, uh, automatic speech recognition produces text. And we know that you know today, browser engines already, browsers support speech recognition, and there are libraries out there like Anyang, which kind of help you with that. You know? So what is it that is really happening? I, mean, I want to first quickly show you guys a little demo here. Uh, I mean, this for, you know, just to kind of, uh, for us to sync up conceptually what we're talking about, you know? So this is a simple demo. Uh, Cyan. Crimson. So there we go. So this demo first was showing you that, hey, there's this page and you know, if you speak the color, it can you know respond to it. I want to show you the other one. Uh, I love to sing because it's fun. I love to sing because it's fun. Well, I mean, it's, it's going to get there, you know. Uh, so basically, if it recognizes the sound, you know, uh, it's going to respond to it, you know, and it's going to say, okay, either it got the phrase or it didn't get the phrase, right? So in one sense, uh, we can go back here and we can say that, hey, you know, we already have, hooray, there is already automatic speech recognition and we could see that we could take action based on the speech that is being recognized. So is NLP really necessary? Now, if we were to look at what is happening a little bit closer, you know, uh, if we look at the source code for this, right? I'm gonna look at the source code for this. And let us say we take a closer look at the source code, the way it works is it basically initiates your speech recognition engine, and once it gets the output back from the speech recognition engine, it just responds to it. Uh, it says, okay, well, you know, what is the information that was received and, you know, and it is going to take an action on that, you know. I mean, we've heard about Alexa and I'm sure we've all kind of programmed with Alexa and Google Assistant. And if you look at how even Alexa gets programmed, you got to, kind of mention all the possible ways a person interacts with an application, you know, upfront. And that's the same even with Google Assistant, right? So if you go to Google Assistant, it does the same thing, you know? So you got to kind of say upfront what are all the scenarios for which we program it for, you know? Now, the challenge would be that, you know, if we take a, an enterprise app, you know, the number of combinations, let us take a simple mortgage application or a healthcare application, the number of fields which are there are going to be too many, you know, for us to kind of look at all the ways somebody can interact with the app, right? So that's where NLP kind of brings value to the picture. It kind of helps us contain the combinatorial explosion, you know. So how does NLP do that? NLP, basically what it does is it compiles the it, you, you use a compiler to kind of uh, understand the spoken language, right? So what is happening here is that you really are trying to take a spoken language grammar and you are trying to manage it with a compiler grammar. And a human grammar is indefinitive, whereas a compiler grammar is very definitive, right? And to manage it, uh, what you do in NLP is typically you use something called a parts of speech tagger, you know. So that may sound kind of fairly basic, but you know that's a this is a key uh, you know technology in NLP, you know. So it boils down to say using a pass tagger, uh, and what is a pass? You know NLP is all about you know breaking down language into its grammar and understanding it, and you know you go through and you try to see that hey, there are these eight parts of speech, how do you handle them? And this is where I believe there is something called, or at least this is a word or phrase I came up with to describe the situation called grammar friction, you know? 
So what do I mean by grammar friction? If you look at the typical NLTK package, say from Python, right? So it's going to break it down. Everything gets broken down to tokens. And that is how compilers work, you know? Everything is broken down to tokens and there is no real semantic, you know, meaning behind it. It's not only the semantic, but there is no kind of hierarchical or, uh, you know, conceptual notations in computer science grammar. You know, it's regardless, of course, it all gets uh, binned in a semantic issue. But but there is a little bit of a friction, uh, you know. I'll we'll, we'll address that a little later. Uh, between between the way a compiler grammar works and the human grammar works, right? So so how is that being handled, you know? Today with NLP, you know, you do this uh, parser speech tagger, you know. Uh, I want to quickly get, show you guys a little demo on how a typical parser speech tagger works. Uh, and the tagger I had chosen for that example is a, a tree tagger, you know, uh, a tree tagger uh, and the demo kind of would look like this, you know, you would basically, you could put any phrase in there. Uh, you could say, hey, we are discussing a few things. They may be useful. So the reason I chose a uh, partial speech tagger, uh, the tree tagger is because the uh, tree tagger is what is being used both by the Stanford parser as well as NLTK. You know, they both use the pen tree bank tree set, uh, tree bank tag set, and um, and is also used by R, you know, if you look at R, R internally uses this tree tagger. Uh, so uh, bottom line, you know, hey, you know, you use a parts of speech tagger, you try to extract uh, the different parts of speech and you try to make sense of it. So let us let me quickly go back to what our objective here is. Say we said, hey, we know the overall workflow is we go from automatic speech recognition to NLP and and we kind of have some idea what ASR does. And then we saw that, hey, NLP does add value a little bit, you know, that is good. Okay, great. Now let us now go to what is going on with OLTP. So OLTP, we all know, you know, we have, we all kind of manage uh, enterprise apps as part of our daily occupation. And we know that the key thing is transaction processing. And transaction processing basically depends on having tables to store the data. End of the day when the transactions are run, the data is captured, it is being stored in tables. And these tables are kind of have been defined by some kind of enterprise data model. And the enterprise data model in terms is based on some kind of entity relationship model. And the entity relationship model is basically a model built on nouns and words extracted from some kind of requirements document out there, right? So I want you to kind of keep that in mind, you know, uh, is that, hey, at the end of the day, the transactions are dependent on some kind of nouns and verbs which are extracted from the requirements document somewhere, right? And we got a similar scenario uh, with NLP as well. The parts of speech tagger produces these nouns and verbs and among all the other parts of speech that it is able to trace, you know, and hey, it, it is also, you know, capturing nouns and verbs, right? Okay. So how do we bridge this NLP to OLTP, you know? We saw how it is being done today with something like Alexa or, you know, or Google Assistant or, you know, or even if we talk about looking at this code here, you know, and there are even libraries like Anyang, you know, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but this is a pretty good library. Uh, uh, and you could say things to it, you know, you know, I could show TPS report. So basically it does uh, work, you know, I mean, I'm not able to get it work while I have my webinar going, but if you look at the source code of this page, 
how Anyang library works, you know, it would be kind of similar. You know, if you if I were to kind of zoom this in a little bit, you will see that hey, you know, it is going to say if it is if the message is the TPS report, then you're going to see something. You know, there is be some kind of conditional, you know, based on which it is responding, right? So so if if we have a well this approach would actually work uh if it is a simple application, right? Um but if we have a complex application with lots of fields, uh how do you bridge it? You know, because if you have a if you have like I say a mortgage application or a healthcare application of some sort and we have like 15, 20 or maybe 30 fields on the screen, you know, how do you how do you bridge the provide an NLP interface to this OLTP app, which we are supporting? You know, uh, what I want to do is I want to do a quick poll and see, uh, hey, you know, how many of us really want to really NLP enable enterprise systems? You know, so I just want to get a quick feedback from you guys to see, hey, you know, how many of you really are, you know. Yeah, the idea is I want to get a quick feedback on this question. So, yeah, looks like uh, wow, I I didn't quite expect that, you know. But more than eighty eighty four percent of the people have said yes. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm I also understand the other side of the perspective. Sixteen percent who says that hey, NLP may not be quite ready yet. Uh, so. You know, so so that is good to know. So okay, all right, moving along. Now, going back to our original question, right? Uh, how do we? I want to talk about DSL. You know, so DSL as a technology has been around for a while. You know, uh, domain specific language and how DSL typically works is that you get some kind of case study you know, or a requirements document uh, or a situation for which you're trying to build a DSL. From the DSL, you try to extract the grammar and you kind of try to find the nouns and verbs in there, you know. So let's look at this picture here. So we have DSLs for which you extract nouns and verbs directly from the specification, right? And we had OLTP, which has nouns and verbs in it, right? And we have NLP, which has nouns and verbs in it. So, but how do we bridge NLP to OLTP? So what I would say is, what we figured out as a solution which seemed to work is that instead of having a DSL go directly off the specification to pull out the grammar and nouns and verbs, use the ER model as the input. Because every enterprise app invariably has an ER model. So the idea is build a DSL based on the ER model as an input. You know, the nouns and verbs of the ER model, use them as the input and build a DSL. And then reconcile them or add additional methods for it based on a typical use case from the NLP layer. So the, the, the idea is that you introduce DSL uh, before, in between at the NLP layer and the OLTP layer. And that kind of resolves, or at least it simplifies the issue, right? In the, in the sense of how do you handle the NLP coming up with so many nouns, you know, and verbs, and action needs to be taken, and OLTP has or the need to store only a certain amount of certain cases of those nouns and verbs, you know. 
All right, what is the benefits of this approach? The key benefits are that if we had looked at this coding approach for the typical way today ASR apps work with NLP is that you cannot upfront, you know, it will be very hard to kind of figure out, say, for example, all the sample utterances that somebody is going to do to interact with an NLP app, right? Uh, so it's kind of, and it is hard to code it, code for it as well, you know. So to program for it, it's easier if we somehow manage the language stream which comes in. And the way we manage it is by using NLP, uh, hold on a second here, by using uh, NLP and then from the NLP, you use DSL because an internal DSL at that, because there is already programming languages and you can build a DSL in that language, in an existing language. And the inputs for the DSL can come from the ER model. And then you can refine it a little bit with what could typically come out of the NLP scenario. And that would allow a very flexible binding between the NLP and the OLTP layer. Yeah. So that's that's the benefit of this approach. Yeah. All right, so now, if I were to say that, hey, what is it that I want you guys to take away from this, you know, a few minutes of uh, discussion that we are having, is that if the apps are small, you know, just simple ASR may be enough, you know, uh, but for enterprise app, NLP does add interaction, you know, a richer interaction, and, in order to kind of build a solution around OL, you know, to enable existing OLTP and enterprise apps to have an NLP interface, you need to use a DSL, you know, and the DSL really helps you uh, simplify things there, you know, and that, that would pretty much be it, you know. And guys, if you have any questions, I would appreciate you can just shoot it across and, you know, we'll see. Uh, if there's any questions whatsoever, uh, be willing to help. But while we are waiting for the questions, um, so I mean, I know there were some questions, and uh, hey, what would be the role that uh, chatbots and voice assistants play into this technology? You know, so certainly chatbots and voice assistants are mostly ASR tools, right? They are not NLP tools, but they are like a front end to this NLTP OLTP bridge, you know. And this other question is, what is the business case for NLP to OLTP? That I kind of outlined at the beginning, right? I mean, in the sense that, hey, if, there's, uh, if there are existing enterprise apps, you know, uh, having this kind of a bridge really simplifies things. For example, if you want to routinely look up, say, today's mortgage rate, or how is my house doing? Or uh, where's my closest hospital? Or when, you know, things of that nature. Uh, you could definitely benefit by using a bridge, you know. And where does RPA fit into this technology? This is kind of like, it's, it's more like a backend to an RPA, or it could even be an alternative to an RPA, you know, uh, if, you, if you really think about this, uh, yeah. And I know there'll be some uh, questions out there in everyone's mind saying like, hey, what about word clouds? What about neural network methods and such and such, you know? So those things for that, look out for our next session. We're gonna do one on natural language generation from BI. Uh, what the reason we're, I'm saying that is because if you look at this flow, you know, if you go from some kind of chat bot or some kind of, uh, device or browser which does ASR recognition, uh, which goes into NLP, which gets processed by DSL, and then you do your transaction, and your response from the OLTP system would go back to an NLG system, you know, which would be a natural language generation system, and then that gets converted by, again, a chatbot or some device from text to speech, you know. So this part, you know, uh, we will address, you know, in a separate session. So that would come more from the natural language generation uh, piece. So, 
so that is it guys so i appreciate your time there and uh i i guess we'll connect soon thank you